Welcome back, everyone, to another video. Well, a few weeks ago, my friend Mr. Terry uh, did a video on this uh, 100 history questions you must know and decided to see how he would do. Now, I intentionally have not watched his video uh, of that. In fact, I don't watch a lot of his videos, not because I'm not a fan, because I am a fan. And he, he's a friend, and we talk quite a bit, and uh, I, I'm very supportive of his channel, and his channel in many ways was an inspiration for this channel. But I don't watch most of his videos unless they're reactions to videos I've already done, because I, I want my reactions to be real, and I don't typically watch the videos ahead of time so unless it's something i've already done i don't watch it but uh, so i haven't watched this because i wanted to be able to play this myself when i saw that he was doing it so we're going to see how i do and maybe we'll talk about a little bit of the history behind some of these play along see how you do and see if you can beat my score i imagine a lot of you will probably be able to do that uh, i want to give a shout out to kyle in jacksonville florida and david in frederick maryland thank you guys so much for your support on patreon let's go ahead and dive into this one Oh, and by the way, the name of the channel is Quizzes for You with the letter or the number four, uh, and the link is in the description if you want to be able to watch it without my commentary. All right, here we go. Hi, and welcome to this history quiz with a difference. There's no questions on dates. Well, maybe one, but that's all. I've set the level of this quiz for the average person to enjoy. I'm disappointed we're not doing stuff on dates because I pride myself on being pretty good with the dates. So what that means is there's some easy questions and a few that you might find challenging. If you're a history professor, it's not for you. But for everybody else, have fun and here we go. So now I'm going to feel really bad when I don't know some of these, right? Significant shift in human history. What's another term for the Neolithic Revolution? Uh, agricultural Revolution, shift right? In human history. What's another term for the Neolithic Revolution? Yeah, industrial Revolution, industrial we're talking 17, 1800s. And the answer is the Agricultural Revolution. Mesopotamia, referred to as the Cradle of Civilization, was located in the region now known as what? The Middle East, Central it's America, actually the area Central around Africa, the Tigris the and Euphrates rivers, mostly running kind of through Iraq. The correct answer here, the Middle East. The earliest known writing system developed by the Sumerians is known as what? Hieroglyphics, cuneiform, or pictographs. So it's cuneiform, and uh, there's some great examples of that. If you go to the British Museum, you'll see some examples of that. And just so you know, the questions are mostly in chronological order. Oh, okay. So I'll and do better as we answer, go further along. Cuneiform. What did the Sumerians use to write on? Clay tablets. Paper, papyrus, or clay tablets? This is before paper was kind of a standard thing. It was clay tablets. So far, pretty easy. And they used clay tablets. I know I'm going to miss some. The Great Pyramid of Giza is believed to be which pharaoh's tomb? So it's Ramesses Khufu. The seconds, Tutankhamun's, or Khufu's? Khufu, and I think Cheops may be just like the Greek version of the name. And it's believed to be the tomb of Khufu. Hammurabi's code is one of the earliest known sets of written laws. Who was Hammurabi? Ooh, was this is a tough one because... I mean, I think he was a king, but I'm going to say he was a priest. Priest, king, or warrior? Was he a Syrian? Persian? A little he was unsure on this a one. King. He was a king. All right, makes sense. Who was inside the famous Trojan horse? Was it Greek, Trojan, or Persian warriors? I think they would have been Greek, right? Although the Trojans were technically Greek, but they were different Greeks. And it was Greek warriors. According to the legend... Well, I guess, no, I, maybe Tro Trojans weren't Greek, were they? Ancient Rome was founded by two brothers, Romulus and who? Romulus and Remus. Remus. Romus or Augustus. Raised by wolves. That's why you see that statue there, that sculpture. And the correct answer is Romulus and Remus. Where is considered the birthplace of democracy? Athens. Rome, Damascus, or Athens? I think most people know that one, right? The correct answer there, Athens. Whose teachings were recorded by his disciples Ooh, tough in one. a collection known as the Analects? I feel like this has got to be Confucius because Confucius would have been more ancient. And if we're going in birth in, in kind of chronological order, I want to say Buddha comes later. Confucius's, Jesus's, or Buddha's? I think Buddha's after Jesus, and after like would be in the AD answer, time. Confucius. Yeah. 
And you know, I don't know if they still do this, but growing up, we had a lot of jokes that started with Confucius say, and then you would give some weird saying, and some of them were not real appropriate for YouTube. Clay was largely replaced by iron for weapons and bronze. tools during the Iron Age. Brass, bronze, or steel? Steel's much, much more recent. And the answer, bronze. The Peloponnesian War, an ancient Greek war, was fought between Athens and who? Athens Sparta, and... Sparta, Troy, or Argos? Sparta? I think it's Sparta. And the answer is Sparta. A little unsure on that one. Alexander the Great was the king of which ancient kingdom? Macedonia. Egypt, Persia, or Macedonia? His father was Philip of Macedon. And he was the king of Macedonia. Though he did conquer Persia and Egypt. Who was Alexander the Great's famous oh. teacher, known for his philosophical teachings? Was it Socrates, Aristotle, or Plato? I think it was Aristotle. I'm a little unsure when it comes to these Greek philosopher types. I think it was Aristotle. And it was Aristotle. The famous Rosetta Stone has which a I've seen carved in three types of writing. Greek, Demotic, and which other? So the Rosetta Stone today is in uh, the British Museum. Highly recommend if you ever get a chance to go. Incredible amounts of history there. I was just blown away by what I saw. I did film a lot of it. I just haven't edited it and uploaded it yet. Uh, but it's huge. I mean, it's taller than I am. Um, not that I'm that tall, but it, it's big. And it's Hebrew, hieroglyphics. Latin, or hieroglyphics. It was one of the keys to understanding hieroglyphics. And the answer is hieroglyphics. Who was the last pharaoh of Egypt? Cleopatra. Was it Ramesses II, Tutankhamun, or Cleopatra? So Ramesses II is probably it's more than a thousand years before Cleopatra. Uh, Cleopatra, of course, is uh, going to be right there up to the life of Julius Caesar and even beyond. She was a lover with Julius Caesar, had a child with him, later becomes a lover of Mark Antony. Uh, so uh, right in that kind of... I want to say it's right around 30 BC, maybe 29, something like that is when she dies. So a good 1,200 years after Ramses II. And it was Cleopatra. Who was the first emperor? Of Augustus. Rome? Augustus, Nero, or Hadrian? So Augustus comes well before those other two. And there's a bonus point if you can give his other name. The answer Octavian. is Augustus. Who is considered the so his real name was Oct I, I don't even think it was Octavian. Octavian was kind of a change to his name, but he's like the grand nephew of Caesar. He's his adopted son, his legal heir. Um, who is considered the first pope of the Roman Catholic Church? That's Peter. First pope of the Roman Catholic Church. Is it John, Paul, or Peter? Going to be visiting P St. Peter's Basilica in Rome next April if you want to go along. Still some spots available on the trip. And the correct answer is Peter. Which ancient civilization is known for inventing true paper? Ooh, this is tough. Egyptians, I, Chinese, or Greeks? I want to say Egyptians, but I think it's Chinese. I feel like it's Chinese. And that was invented by the Chinese. Thought so. All right, so going back to this one, uh, I want to say, I mean, it's definitely not Nero. Roman Empire I want to say Trajan. territorial extent under which emperor? Nero, Might be Hadrian. Adrian, or Trajan? And that was under Trajan. Trajan. Yeah. The Dark Ages began with the fall of which empire? Uh, this has got to be the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, I can't think of the exact date, but I mean, we're talking what, maybe the 5th century? 5th, 6th century, and somewhere in there? The fall of the Roman Empire. Around 637 38, which army captured the holy city of Jerusalem? It'd be the Muslim, Muslim Christian, army. Or Jewish. This is right when Islam's even really becoming a thing in the first place. It was captured by the Muslim army. In which ancient civilization was gunpowder invented? Chinese, Greek, or Roman? Uh, that's definitely Chinese. Chinese invented a lot of stuff that people just kind of assume that, came from once somewhere again, else. was the Chinese. Name the Norse explorer, who is often credited with being the first European to set foot in North America. Harold Bluetooth, Leif Erikson, or Eric Bloodaxe? Uh, that's Leif Erikson. We learned about him in high school. Actually, middle school, probably. Leif Erikson. 
The Norman conquest of England took place in which year? 1066, 1099, or 1014? October 1066. Battle of Hastings. I promise this is the only question on dates. The answer is 1066. Ah, uh, we should have more and on dates. And who was the Norman leader who led the conquest and became the new King of England? Was it Harold Hardrada, Richard the Lionheart, or William the Conqueror? So it's William the Conqueror. Harold Hardrada actually also invaded England during this time, and um, the King of England at the time, King Harold, uh, actually, Harold Godwinson, he goes up and he defeats Harold Hardrada. Uh, the Battle of Stamford Bridge, uh, and then has to immediately turn around and deal with the invasion from William the Bastard, as he was known, the Duke of Normandy, which he is not able to win. And it was William the Conqueror. Which university, founded in the 11th century, holds the title of the oldest university in continuous operation in the world? That's got to be university Oxford, right? University of Bologna, Oxford, or York. Oxford's kind of west of London. And that's a uh, correct answer in my terrible Italian accent is Bologna. Oh, there's my first one that I butchered badly. It's definitely not the University of Oxford. My apologies to those who knew that one. What was the objective of the First Crusade? Was it to convert Africans to Christianity, recapture the Holy Lands, or rescue the Vatican from invasion? Recapture the Holy Lands. That's what all the Crusades were about, to really. Recapture the Holy Lands. Which holy city was the main focus for the Crusaders to recapture from Muslim control? Was it Mecca, Jerusalem, or Medina? Jerusalem. Mecca and Medina were just Muslim cities. And the answer, Jerusalem. Whose birth name was Temujin and established what became the largest land empire in history. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, or Cyrus the Great? Genghis Khan, and some of you will correct me and say, no, it's Genghis Khan. Correct answer, Genghis Khan. Which is a title granted by the emperor to a military commander or general in ancient Japan. Ronin, samurai, or shogun? Oh, shogun. I know that from computer games. And the correct answer, shogun. What is the common name of the Royal Charter of Rights agreed to by King John of England in 1215? Is it the Declaration of England, the Magna Carta, or the Great Constitution? Magna Carta actually means Great Charter, so and that one kind of the Magna Carta. answers itself. Marco Polo was a Venetian merchant and explorer known for his journeys from Europe to which continent? Africa, Asia, or North America? Asia, he went east. Marco Polo. These are pretty easy so far and for the most part. the answer there is Asia. What was the capital city of the Aztec Empire, known for its grand architecture and intricate canal system? Tenochtitlan, Rio Beck, or Cusco? Tenochtitlan was a huge city uh, that's not too far away from modern Mexico City, which is also a huge city. Uh, yeah. And the correct answer, Tenochtitlan. Which two countries fought the Hundred Years' War from 1337 to 1453? England and France, Germany and Spain, or Portugal and Italy? To England and France. A lot of this happens during the reign of King Edward III of England. Uh, not all of it, of course. But, um, yeah, you can see it lasted longer than 100 years. And it wasn't 100 years straight of warfare, right? No, no country at that time was able to sustain a standing army for years and years on end. They would fight for a while. They would break. They would fight some more. Same thing with the Wars of the Roses. The Wars of the Roses was not continuous fighting. It was fighting every so often over a period of that time. That was between England and France. The Black Death is believed to have originated where before spreading to Europe? South America, Africa, or Asia? Asia. And it's, it's important to note that not every reference in history to plague is that specific, like bubonic or pneumonic plague. There are other diseases that were called plague. Anytime there was a big outbreak of something that killed a lot of people and didn't have a known source, they would often refer to it as plague. But many of them were actually bubonic plague. And it spread from Asia. So we're kind of into the 14th century now. 
Between 1347 and 1351, the Black Death killed approximately what percent of Europe's population? I think it's 30 to, 10, to 60. 30 to 60 or 70 to 90. I've got an annoying fly that won't leave me alone right now. A 30 to 60 percent. And imagine if that happened today. I mean, in the United States alone, 30 percent of the population. I mean, you're talking like, what, 90, 100 million people? We think COVID was terrible. I mean, that pales in comparison. And it wiped out 30 to 60 percent. And some things about this, and we've talked about this in other videos. I mean, think about not just about just the emotional impact of a third to one half of families being wiped out. And in many cases, entire families wiped out while others were more often spared. Uh, but think about what that does to your infrastructure. You know, a third to one half of all the farmers are dead. A third to one half of all the craftsmen are dead. A third to one half of all of the magistrates and uh, political leadership are dead. I mean, it took a century or more just to recover from all of that. Which Italian city is considered the birthplace of the Renaissance? Florence, Rome or Venice? Florence. We're also going there on the trip to Italy, by the way. Rome and Florence. Gabby Florence. And the correct answer, Florence. What was the capital city of the Inca Empire, renowned for its intricate stonework and terraced architecture? Cusco, Tikal, or Quito? I think Quito is the capital of Ecuador, but I want to say it's Cusco. And the correct answer is Cusco. I don't know why I know that. Who was the last Byzantine emperor who died defending Constantinople from the Ottoman Turks? Ooh. Was it Justinian I, Constantine XI, or Theo I? I think it's Constantine the 11th. Not 100% on that one. Constantine the 11th. Another guess. In 1492, Columbus set sail from Spain on his first voyage to find a new route to where? Asia, South America, or Southern to Africa? To Asia. And and this was a, you know, there are, there are time periods in history where so much of history as we know it is driven by a particular idea or thought or quest. You know, for the United States, so much of our history is driven by the idea of manifest destiny, of spreading West. So much of our history is, surrounds the, the issue of slavery uh, and its expansion or its limitations. Uh, so much of history during this time is caught up with the quest to find easier access routes to uh, the spice trade into the silk trade and things like that. Uh, and, you know, if, you know, they're looking for this route. And then later on, so much of history will be consumed with trying to find what was called the Northwest Passage, which was another way to get around North America once they knew it was there. It's Asia. And he was looking for a new route to Asia. Columbus's voyage was sponsored by which monarchs of Spain? Ferdinand and Isabella, Henry and Anne, or Carlos and Marie? Ferdinand and Isabella who were uniting two kingdoms there. And it was Ferdinand and Isabella. Columbus's fleet consisted of three ships, the Nina, Pinta, and which other? The Santa Susana, Maria, or Clara? Santa Maria. I want to say there was a fourth ship that like ended up not making the voyage, but Holy Mary is what it means, Santa Maria. Everybody it learns that in school Santa here. Maria. Columbus encountered land on October the 12th, 1492, in the present-day Bahamas. What did he name the island? Hispaniola, Nassau, or San Salvador? San Salvador. And he named it San Salvador. Which of these is not a crop that was brought to Europe from the New World? Maize, potatoes, or apples? It's got to be apples. I mean, maize was corn. I mean, it's huge. It's apples. The answer is apples. We had apples already. When Portugal and Spain started forming colonies in the New World, they initially forced whom to work on their plantations? Indigenous people, European prisoners, or French peasants? I think it was indigenous peoples. I mean, they, they started... Used... This is long before the first enslaved Africans are brought over. They first enslaved many of the indigenous peoples who themselves had been enslaved by other indigenous peoples. Indigenous people. Which European nation started the transatlantic slave trade in the early 16th century? Was it Spain, Portugal, or England? It's got to be Spain, right? I mean, England the gets involved a little bit later. The became involved with it too, but it was started by Portugal. Oh, boy, that I messed that one up. <laughs> My apologies to Spain. 
Over more than 300 years, approximately how many enslaved Africans were transported across the Atlantic? 1 million, 5 million, or 12 million? I think it's probably got to be a million. By all the nations that were involved in it, the answer is over 12 million. Oh, wow. I was way off on that one, too. My goodness, 12 million. And you got to figure that so many of them died before they even made it. And there are these horrible stories of, like, if they got sick, they would just throw them overboard. Or if they, you know, got shipwrecked or, or were low on supplies, they just treated them like, like worse than animals. Between 1508 and 1512, the Sistine Chapel ceiling was painted by which artist? Raphael, Michelangelo, or Leonardo da Vinci? That's Michelangelo. I'm, I'm sure of that one. Definitely Michelangelo. And that was by Michelangelo. In 1517, who is said to have nailed a copy of his 95 Theses to the door of a church in Germany? Nicolaus Copernicus, Martin Luther, or Leonardo da Vinci? So we've got a scientist... A uh, theologian and a painter. So that one should be kind of obvious, right? Uh, it's Martin Luther, uh, who was a, a Catholic priest, a theologian, who uh, uh, there's some questions about exactly how that all went down, but he was not intending to start uh, a Protestant Reformation, like a break away from the Catholic Church. And I think he probably would have been horrified to know how many churches call themselves Lutheran today. Uh, he was trying to reform the church. But it was Luther. And that was Martin it's in Luther. Wittenberg. Who is famous for leading the first expedition to circumnavigate the globe in 1519 to 22. Ferdinand Magellan, Christopher Columbus, or James Cook? Well, I, Columbus was dead by this point, and I think Cook wasn't on the scene yet. It's Magellan. And he died on the journey from a poisoned arrow. The answer is Ferdinand Magellan. Name the Spanish conquistador who is best remembered for capturing the Aztec capital. Was it Hernán Cortés, Juan Carlos, or Miguel de Cervantes? Hernán Cortés. And the answer is Hernán Cortés. Which Polish By astronomer? the way, can we talk about the fact that there's a Spanish explorer known as Cabeza de Vaca, which is head of the cow, which is an amazing name, by the way. Posed the heliocentric model of the solar system, challenging the geocentric view. Johannes Kepler, Galileo Galilei, or Nicolaus Copernicus? So, um, heliocentric just means that it was the idea that the planets revolved around the sun rather than everything revolving around the earth, which was unfortunately very controversial at the time and was kind of a big deal. I think it's Kepler. And it was Nicolaus Copernicus. Oh, it's Copernicus. Oh, jeez. Why did I think it was Kepler? You... You know I'm not good with science stuff. What is Queen Elizabeth I's father's name? He was known for his six marriages. Was it King Henry VII, Edward VI, or Henry VIII? So it's Henry VIII. Uh, Henry VII was her grandfather. Edward VI was her half-brother. And he is King Henry VIII. The modern Gregorian calendar was introduced to replace which earlier calendar system? The Julian, Islamic, or Mayan? The Julian calendar. And this is why um, sometimes when you look at dates that are written, uh, like I think George Washington's birth date would be an example, you'll often see two dates written. Uh, because, um, And you'll see this on tombstones in New England in some places. You'll see like it'll say like 1730-31 because under that calendar at the time, uh, there are several layers to this. One is that they skipped a number of days, right? So the certain days in one year don't even actually exist because uh, they went right from one day to the next with like 11 days in the middle, I think. But also the first day of the year at that time was March 25th. That's why we have um, September, which is our ninth month now, but sept meaning seven, October meaning uh, eight, but it's the 10th month, November, which should be nine, and December, which should be 10, because at the time they were the 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th months of the year. January was the 11th month, and February was the 12th month, because the first month of the year was March. March 25th was New Year's Day, so March 24th would have been a different year than March 25th. So like March 24th, 1700 would have been followed by March 25th, 1701. Uh, it's more complicated than just that, but it's the Julian calendar. And it replaced the Julian calendar. 
Named the settlement established in 1607 that became the first permanent English settlement in North America. That's Jamestown. Plymouth, Jamestown, or Rochester. Plymouth or 1620. And it was Jamestown. In 1610, one of Galileo's major discoveries was his observation of four moons orbiting which planet? Jupiter, Mars, or Saturn? Jupiter. And what's really cool is even with a decent, uh, with, with any decent telescope today, you can see a number of those moons. It's really pretty cool. My son and I have looked at it a number of times. You look at Jupiter and instantly you can see a bunch of the moons around Jupiter. And the answer is Jupiter. Who led the parliamentary forces in the English Civil Wars and became Lord Protector of England in 1653? Was it Charles I, Oliver Cromwell, or Richard III? So Charles I is the king that they overthrow, uh, and he's executed in 1649. Uh, it's Oliver Cromwell is the answer. Uh, and then Richard III actually died in 1485, so he was well before this. And that was Oliver Cromwell. Whose groundbreaking work introduced his laws of motion and the laws of universal gravitation in 1687? Alessandro Volta, Michael Faraday, or Isaac Newton? And Isaac Newton. And that was Isaac Newton. Anytime you're thinking about gravity, obviously you go right to Isaac Newton, right? Which country is considered the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution? The United Kingdom, Germany, or France? It's the UK. And this is the time when... Uh, places like the Midlands, in particular the city of Birmingham, really kind of come along the scene. Uh, Birmingham is now the second largest city in the UK, but at the time it was pretty small. Uh, but because of its proximity and uh, where it was and because of a lot of the inventions that take place in that area, uh, it becomes prominent and grows exponentially. And the answer, the United Kingdom. The use of which new energy source played a crucial role in driving machinery during the Industrial Revolution? Electrical, wind, or steam power? Steam. And, uh, in fact, the first real use of a steam engine was in the Birmingham area to pump, I think it was to pump water out of a coal mine. And that's one of the reasons why it became so prominent. And that was steam power. What was the primary reason for the 1773 Boston Tea Party? Was it a protest against taxes, slavery, or working conditions? <laughs> it was taxes. Nobody was doing too much protesting over slavery or working conditions in 1773. It's all about that money. And it was a protest against taxes. Who was appointed the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution? Was it Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, or John Adams? It's George Washington, and it's actually a really fascinating story because John Adams is the one who makes the motion to make George Washington commander-in-chief. Washington was a Virginian, and at this point in 1775, the American Revolution is primarily a New England thing. It's really not spread yet to the other colonies, but Virginia is the most powerful colony, and it was a brilliant uh, stroke of politics by John Adams to nominate a Virginian to lead the Continental Army because that pulled the power and influence of Virginia into the war and it made it a more universal struggle than just a New England problem. Uh, everybody assumed it was going to be a New England person that would be nominated for that. And Washington, while he projected this air of humility uh, kept showing up to the Continental Congress, of whom he was a delegate, wearing his uniform from the French and Indian War, which he started, by the way. Um, and at least you can make the argument he started it. Uh, so he wanted the job. And it was George Washington. In 1776, how many American colonies declared their independence from Great Britain? 13. 11, 12, or 13? Though New York had abstained in that vote. And if you're from the States, you should definitely know these. The answer is 13. In 1776, Dr. Edward Jenner created the world's first successful vaccine. What was it for? Polio, measles, or smallpox? It's smallpox, isn't it? Because they were inoculating for smallpox during the revolution. And it was for smallpox. Yeah, and they would, um, I mean, there's different ways they would do it, but basically they were using, um, they would actually harvest the, 
uh, the smallpox from a living victim of the smallpox, and they would use that to create the vaccine. Um, not totally unlike what they did today, but it was dangerous, and, and there was a chance you would contract the disease in such a way that it would kill you, but there was a good chance you would get the disease and die from it anyway. Uh, so it was, it was a risk that was absolutely worth taking. Who surrendered to George Washington, effectively ending the American Revolutionary War? Was it General Cornwallis, Clinton, or Gage? So Clinton was actually the commander-in-chief of the British forces in North America at this time, but it was Cornwallis who surrendered. Cornwallis was a pretty competent commander, and he got basically hung out to dry by Clinton, who was supposed to come to his aid and didn't. But Cornwallis himself did not surrender to Washington. It was actually his second-in-command, Thomas O'Hara, um, who you see in the movie The Patriot, uh, who surrenders. And so because of that, Washington then instructed his second-in-command to accept the surrender, uh, who was General Lincoln. Uh, interesting story about Thomas O'Hara. He would then later surrender to Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, giving him the distinction of being the only person who surrendered to both George Washington and Napoleon. And it was General Cornwallis. What was stormed by protesters in 1789, marking the start of the French Revolution? The Notre Dame Cathedral, the Bastille, or the Palace of Versailles? The Bastille was a, a prison and uh, also had a lot of weapons available to it, and so that was what they were after. And the answer, the Bastille. Who was the last Queen of France before the French Revolution? Was it Marie Antoinette, Anne of Brittany, or Isabella of France? Marie Antoinette, she was Austrian. And the answer is Marie Antoinette. A rebellion by slaves resulted in the establishment of which independent Caribbean country in 1804? Jamaica, Barbados, or Haiti? It was Haiti. Uh, Toussaint Louverture was one of the guys involved in all of that. And I feel like I'm reminded of the uh, debate from several years ago where Mike Pence had a fly land on his head because this stupid fly keeps landing on me while we're making this video. And there ended up like a Twitter account for the fly and all this stuff. It was Haiti. And the correct answer is Haiti. In 1804, who was crowned emperor of the French? Napoleon Bonaparte, Louis the Sixteenth, or Francis the First. Napoleon, and it's important to note that distinction, right? Because there are sometimes these distinctions that we we kind of gloss over, like he's Emperor of the French, not Emperor of France. Uh, it's the same thing with kings uh, that were known as the kings of the Scots, not king, kings of Scotland, to distinguish between the land and the people, right? Same thing here. Emperor of the French is Emperor of the French people rather than Emperor of France. And the correct answer, Napoleon Bonaparte. In 1805, the British Royal Navy under Nelson defeated the French and Spanish navies at which famous battle? Waterloo, Trafalgar, or Gravelines? It's uh, Trafalgar, and he was killed in that battle. And the correct and answer... And by the way, it was shorter than Napoleon. Just saying. The Battle of Trafalgar. Who was nicknamed the Liberator for helping nations become independent from Spain? Simon Bolivar, Augusto Pinochet, or Che Guevara? Simon Bolivar. And it was Simon Bolivar. Who led the British force to defeat Napoleon at Waterloo in 1815? Was it Horatio Nelson, James Cook, or the Duke of Wellington? As Duke of Wellington, Nelson's dead by this point. I think Cook's dead by this point, and he was an explorer anyway. It's Wellington. Arthur Wellesley. It was the Duke of Wellington. Which battle fought in 1863 is often considered the turning point in the American Civil War? The Battle of Bull Run, Gettysburg, or Vicksburg? <laughs> Battle of Bull Run's July 21st, 1861. Gettysburg and Vicksburg both are fought uh, in 1863. Um, I'm going to give the answer that he's going for here, and then I'm going to give the correct answer. He's looking for the Battle of Gettysburg, but the answer is Vicksburg. That's the real turning point. And the correct answer is the Battle of Gettysburg. Who did Robert E. Lee surrender to on April the 9th, 1865, effectively ending the American Civil War? Ulysses S. Grant, Abraham Lincoln, or Joseph Hooker? 
So pre- Lincoln's president, Hooker, was a general commanding troops. Uh, by, by the end of the war, he commanded troops in the Western Theater, uh, places like Chattanooga. Um, but it's a grant. And it did effectively end, not really he end the Civil War. to Ulysses S. Grant. In 1893, who became the first self-governing country to allow all adult women to vote? The United States, Canada, or New Zealand? New Zealand, isn't it? And that was New Zealand. Yeah, the U.S. is going to be another couple decades after this before they allow it. Who discovered and named X-rays in 1895? Was it Tesla, Rentgen, or Edison? Oh, it's Rentgen. Radiation's named after him. And the correct answer the measurement is of Rentgen. Who is credited with sending and receiving the first transatlantic radio signal in 1901? Was it Marconi, Tesla, or Edison? It's Marconi. You even hear him mentioned in a song from the 80s, right? Marconi played the mamba. Listen to the radio, don't you remember? We built this city. It's Marconi. And that was Marconi. What was the approximate duration of the Wright brothers' first successful flight in 1903? Was it 12 seconds, 90 seconds, or 3 minutes? I believe it was 12 seconds. They did more flights that day, though. And it was just 12 seconds. Gotta start somewhere. Last Duke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in which city, sparking the events that started World War I? Sarajevo. Berlin, or Sarajevo. I really hope that someday I'll be able to get to that site. And that was in Sarajevo. I'd love to go to Sarajevo. When in 1914 was there an unofficial and impromptu ceasefire to the war on the Western Front? At Easter, Christmas, or New Year's Day? Christmas. We see some German troops there. And that you happened. can always recognize the German troops because they had that button on the forehead of their hats. And at Christmas. Who led the Bolsheviks in the Russian Revolution of 1917? Was it Joseph Stalin, Grigory Rasputin, or Vladimir Lenin? Vladimir Len- Lenin. Uh, Rasputin's dead by that point. Stalin is a part of all of that, but he's not the one leading it. And it was Vladimir Lenin. Name the peace treaty signed in 1919 by Germany and the Allied Nations, formally ending World War I. Was it the Treaty of Berlin, Versailles, or London? It's Versailles, and I don't think it actually took effect until... Like January 2020 or 1920? What was the common name given to the 1918 to 20 flu pandemic that killed an estimated 50 million people? Was it the Spanish, Asian, or Hong Kong flu? Spanish flu, which is really unfortunate because the first really well known and documented outbreak of it happened in Kansas in the United States. We don't know 100% for sure where it came from, but it definitely wasn't Spain. Uh, the, the thing was that Spain was a. Uh, pretty much neutral nation during World War I. Uh, and so they didn't try to hide the fact that they were dealing with the outbreak, whereas with the war still going on, and then even with peace being kind of negotiated, uh, the various warring nations kind of hid what was happening with them. And so the Spanish got blamed for it because they were the first ones that were really kind of honest about it. And it was the Spanish flu. What event in October 1929 is often considered the starting point of the Great Depression? The St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Wall Street Crash, or Polish-Soviet War? The Crash of Wall Street. And this is, you know, like most things in history, it's much more complicated than we like to make it with single events, right? I always use the example of the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Uh, there was a buildup of events that happened before June of 1914 that made that event into the spark that lit a powder keg that was already there. Other things could have also lit that, right? So it could have been something else. It just happened to have been that. So the Wall Street crash is the event that we point to, but there are other things that caused the Wall Street crash to be the influential event that it was. And it was the Wall Street crash. World War II began in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland, prompting Britain and who else to declare war on Germany? France, France, United States, or Soviet Union? And a lot of people ask the question, well, why did France and Britain declare war on Germany in 1939 for invading Poland when a few weeks later the Soviet Union also invaded Poland? Well, 
France and Germany's treaty with Poland specifically focused on Germany. It was specific to a threat of German invasion. There was no treaty obligation to defend Poland against Soviet Union. And it was France which event on December the 7th, 1941, led to the United States entering World War II. The D-Day landings, the attack on Pearl Harbor, or the Battle of Stalingrad. It was Pearl Harbor. But Canada was the it first was one to declare the war on, Pearl on Japan. Name the top secret World War II government program that produced nuclear weapons. Was it the Area 51 project, the Manhattan Project, or the Gemini program? So Gemini is a program that uh, was part of the space race in the 1960s. Manhattan Project is the, the right answer, and that's because it, when it was initially started, it, its offices were in Manhattan. And it was the Manhattan Project. What were the names of the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan in 1945? Little Boy and Fat Man, Trinity and Alamos, or Alpha and Omega? Little Boy and Fat Man, Little Boy, um, is the very first atomic bomb. That's a uranium device. Fat Man was dropped on Nagasaki. That was a plutonium device. They were in the process of trying to create a third one that would be used if necessary, and maybe even a fourth one. Um, well, technically, they would have been fourth and fifth because the first one was the one that was the Trinity test. Uh, at Los Alamos, which is where those names come from. And Alpha and Omega are just the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. And it was Little Boy and Fat Man. After World War II, where were the war crimes trials held for the Nazi Germany leaders? Berlin, Paris, or Nuremberg? Nuremberg. And these were not the only trials. We focus heavily on the Nuremberg trials, but there were trials in Poland. There were trials in Japan. There were trials in a lot of different places. and they were held in Nuremberg. Name the African-American who was arrested in December 1955 for refusing to give up a bus seat to a white passenger. Was it Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, or Rosa Parks? Rosa Parks. Something we definitely learn about in school here in the and States. it was Rosa Parks. In which spacecraft did Yuri Gagarin complete his historic orbit around the Earth on April the 12th, 1961? Luna 1, Vostok 1, or Mir 1? Vostok one, and the Americans did their first space, space flight soon after, but I believe Gagarin actually orbited the Earth on his very first sp uh, space flight, whereas the U.S. basically just shot a guy up and right back down again in Alan Shepard. Uh, and Gagarin's later killed in a training accident. And that was in Vostok one. What 1962 event brought the United States and the Soviet Union to the brink of nuclear war? The Cuban Missile Crisis, the Berlin Blockade, or the Warsaw Pact? Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, Warsaw Pact was just the was Soviet the uh, answer to NATO. Cuban Missile Crisis. In which U.S. city did the assassination of President Kennedy occur on November the 22nd, 1963? New York City, Washington, D.C., or Dallas? It was Dallas, Dealey Plaza specifically, um, which you can see today. It hasn't changed all that much if you go there today. Um, the other three presidents, of course, the first two were assassinated in Washington, D.C., Lincoln and Garfield, uh, Garfield at the train station. Uh, and then, of course, uh, William McKinley was assassinated in Buffalo, New York. It was in Dallas. The Apollo 11 module landed on the moon on July the 20th, 1969. Where did they touch down? The Ocean of Storms, Sea of Tranquility or Sea of Clouds? Sea of Tranquility. I think somebody else might have the landed at Ocean of here, Storms. The correct answer the Sea of Tranquility. The fall of which city in 1975 marked the end of the Vietnam War? Hanoi, Nha Trang, or Saigon? Saigon. And the answer, Saigon. In which country are the killing fields where the Khmer Rouge regime committed genocide in the 70s? Cambodia. Thailand, Vietnam, or Cambodia? Not talked about much. Should be. And they are in Cambodia, who invented the World Wide Web in 1989. Was it Tim Berners-Lee, Bill Gates, or Paul Allen? It's Tim Berners-Lee. 
Man, I can still remember using what were called BBSs or bulletin board systems. Uh, back then, you didn't have, um, at least early on uh, in the early 90s, when we were getting like our, like I had a Commodore 64 with a 300 baud modem, which is like 300 bits per second. And you would dial up, not to a specific number where you could access everything, the World Wide Web, but you dialed up to specific bulletin boards you connected to a particular server fascinating time and it was tim berners lee what event in november 1989 marked the symbolic end of the cold war soviet withdrawal from afghanistan the fall of the berlin wall or ronald reagan's speech in berlin follow the berlin wall and it was the fall of the berlin wall in February 1990, Nelson Mandela was released after spending how many years in prison? 5, 16, or 27? I feel like it was 27, which is just madness to me, but I think it was 27. And the answer is 27. Okay, there's yeah. so many events in our world. All right, so that was fun. Uh, most of them were pretty easy, at least for me, but that doesn't mean they were necessarily easy for you, and I don't want to downplay the fact that some of you probably thought the ones that I did miss were really easy, and you're like, how on earth did you not know that? But that's, that's what's great about this, is that we are all learning together, right? There are things that for you are obvious and easy, and you feel like everybody knows, and those are sometimes the case for me as well. But maybe we learned something along the way. At least we had a little fun. If you have a, like a harder quiz that you know of somewhere out there that I should do, let me know in the comment section and I'll check it out. Uh, please note that whenever you post links, they may not show up right away because uh, the comment section has a filter to keep people from posting uh, like spam and stuff like that, especially pornography spam. Uh, so it automatically filters out anything with a link in it. I have to go in and look through those and manually approve those. So please don't think that your comment's been deleted uh, or anything. It's just that I have to manually approve it in order for it to show up. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to Vincent in Brooklyn, New York, and Jayton in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thank you both so much for your support on Patreon. Check out the channel uh, that hosted this uh, quiz that we just walked uh, through uh, in the description below is the link. Thanks for watching.